welcome, welcome, welcome to Health Issues. I'm your host, Chris Sylvain, and I'm really excited about this show because it, it blends so many different areas that, you know, that we try and focus on so much. And we have two great guests for you. They're actually from the city of New Orleans. We have Miss Charlotte Parent. She's the Deputy Director of Health um, in the City of New Orleans. Thank you, Ms. Parent, for being here. And we also have Ms. Kimberly Williams. She is the Director of Healthy Start New Orleans, both from the uh, City of New Orleans. And uh, so welcome. Thank you. Uh, excited to have you. And, and we, we said we're a little controversy, but we did mention that Ms. Parent uh, my, my good friend Chuck Parent, the, uh, the fire guy, you know, she's his wife, so we appreciate, appreciate that. Uh, we were in high school together uh, about 20 years ago, you know. But, you know, 20 all this. Plus, but, 20 plus. 20 <laughs> plus. That's right. He's older than me. I was a boy. <laughs> That's good. So we're excited. What we're here to talk about um, is babies. There's a program called Best Baby Zone, and we, you know, we've dealt with it on the show many times. New Orleans ranks. Um, we're not with the developed countries, and they call it. A, I was listening on the radio this morning, a Bohemian city or whatever. That we're we're at the bottom of the underdeveloped countries. So New Orleans is so bad as far as for babies dying or low birth weight that um, something has to be done. So tell us about what's up. Good. Um, thank you for having us and having this opportunity to talk about uh, the best baby zone and the health department in general and, and the things that we are doing uh, to hopefully move our children and families forward. Um, we were approached uh, probably now about three years ago this idea actually started uh, and Healthy Start New Orleans has been around uh, for a number of years. It was previously known as great, uh, worked under great expectations for the Healthy Start grant initiative and the focus for that grant was to reduce infant mortality uh, by looking at community based initiatives to do that. So uh, some people may remember programs around the Nenans and Parans who went out and worked with young mothers and, and taught them how to parent and educated them to hopefully start to uh, create some good birth outcomes for our children. So as part of a, a piece of this going forward, uh, some persons who used to work and still work with Healthy Start, but then started to look at what are the, the best community-based pieces that could be pulled out of a Healthy Start, but also putting some data with that to try to really impact the change uh, for our neighborhoods. And what came out of that is what's called the Best Baby Zones. Um, and the Best Baby Zones uh, was developed uh, in part by Dr. Michael Liu and some of his co uh, collaborative partners. Dr. Michael who now heads HRSA up in, in D.C. for us. Um, but the thought was that you could take um, a neighborhood, and when we talk about a neighborhood, we're not talking about a broad area, but, but literally blocks of a neighborhood, and look at the data that tells us which are the worst ones of those neighborhoods in terms of low birth weight, and then look at what are some of the assets that they have in that neighborhood in terms of communities, and start to bring those assets together to work towards the one problem. And so three years ago this idea started to develop and the Kellogg Foundation uh, was approached about funding some best baby zones in the country. Uh, and New Orleans was chosen as one of only four sites uh, to bring this pilot program into place uh, and see whether or not we can make that difference. And so what we did at the City of New Orleans was uh, partner with uh, LSU and placed uh, the, the program under our Healthy Start program because we felt that that would be a good marriage for this program to build some capacity going forward. We're good. Kellogg money. Now, the thing we uh, always say, well, okay, whenever government gets involved with something or whatever, I guess the thing people are concerned, this is a real problem, low birth weight babies or whatever. And the concern is that it's more like wham, 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 the government, you know, a whole lot of talk, but no, the, the numbers will be cooked, and, but the truth of the matter is it will be the same situation rehashed all over again. You know, we have the same problems. We're shooting and killing and murdering, and New Orleans is still a, you know, a, a, a backwards old city that, that, that the, the solutions aren't addressing the real problems. 
Absolutely. I think there are a lot of people who might feel that way, but the Best Baby Zone is a really innovative approach in that it's pulling people together outside of the pub public sector from health, education, social, and community systems to make substantive change in one small area. And so we're really partnering with national organizations, um, Dr. Milt Kotlachuk, who developed the index for how you achieve good prenatal care, um, Sherry Pies from Berkeley, are working together to help us structure this program and evaluate it to make sure that we're really and truly changing outcomes. And so we've got some great community partners with the Holly Grove Carrollton Community Development Corporation, Trinity Christian Community Center, which are active organizations within Holly Grove. And we're pulling in business leaders from across the country and from across the city um, to help us figure out what are some other market-based solutions to some of the issues that we are facing within our city, and particularly within this one neighborhood. Um, um, when we surveyed the mothers who live in that fa in that neighborhood, um, most of them did not list health as their top priority. They were concerned more about finishing their education, um, finding work, and dealing with stressful situations within their relationships and within their communities. Yeah, but I guess this is the thing. What and is the concept of attacking a symptom of a problem? Two questions. First, let's deal with, can we actually attack a symptom of a problem? Is, is the concept even right? You know what I mean? Just, or we, we got some cash to do it, but to even attack, attack a symptom that we know is a symptom. All right. the studies show that it's a symptom. Everybody knows that it's not the problem. Exactly. Everybody knows that it's a subset of a subset of a subset of another problem. Yeah. It's not even at the top of the list. It's something way down. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, um, how do we no matter, we can have the best minds in the world. We can get Jesus and everybody to come back in there and deal with this, but, in let, but how can we even write a plan for something that's not the real problem? So um, this has been done before. Uh, there's a project that this is based around, and it's called the Northern Manhattan Perinatal Project. Where, where is it? It's at? in Harlem, basically. They call it Northern Manhattan. Um, but they were able to reduce infant mortality by 50% over a 10-year period by concentrating on factors other than health, by looking at health, education, community, economic development in the community that they were trying to target. So they went door to door in a 16-story housing project, knocked on every door until the families answered and asked them what they wanted and needed, linked them to immediate resources right then and there, and then also did continual follow-up to make sure that they were linked to programs like Healthy Start. How many women? Um, I'm not quite sure about that, but that's I can get key, back to you with that yeah, information. Yeah, that's the key number. I mean, let's put it like this. You don't have to be sure. Are we talking about uh, a half million? Or are we talking about like 500? Probably somewhere in between there. Now that's right. a big if range. Remember, come because, on, come on. Because oh, remember, in the, the baby zone, again, is not to focus on the entire city. So whereas in the city you may have over 25, 30,000 women to concentrate on, this particular project focuses on a neighborhood, and when we say a neighborhood, we're talking literally blocks. So what we did to in, in, in our decision making on which neighborhood to focus on, we went to the data, and what we did was look to see which of our neighborhoods had the highest low birth weight percentages. And not only where did they have it, we were very, very lucky that the state has started to move to really looking at neighborhoods on a street by street level when we can. And they were able to help us map out where were those births happening and where were they happening in very high concentration. Which neighborhood? And the Holly Grove area is one of the highest with about 20% of those babies born. Holly Grove is off Carrollton. Um, Claiborne, Earhart, and the Monticello Canal. Okay, so, good. But we're only focusing on a small portion of that within a three-quarter mile radius of the A three-quarter mile. So yeah. that, that's right next to that big chemical plant that was there, the, the, the way they used to cook the pesticides. Sides, yes, it's right there in Earhart, and so everybody believes that it's because they have all those chemicals that are still seeping in that was never clean. That area is nothing but grass right now. That in fact, after Katrina, they were concerned that uh, when Katrina happened, it, it uprooted all of these chemicals from the area, and people are still concerned. They paid out a bunch of money. Yes, it wasn't even a bunch of money. It wasn't, the lawyers took it all, but the bottom line though is that uh, people are still concerned that it was because of that plant because the poverty level is not that much higher. They have home ownership and everything else. The statistics should show better health in that area. But the truth of the matter is the health is much lower than the poverty level, and a lot of people feel it's because of that. Had that 
going in there? Actually, the poverty level is quite high there. Um, about 25 percent. Uh, I'm sorry, 30.1 percent, which the city averages 25 percent of our families live in poverty. And so, in the best baby zone, 30 percent of the families. But live compared in poverty. to the Ninth Ward, Little Woods, where they we just caught the guy. We looked at the data, and so the data said that New Orleans East on Chef Mentor Highway, Plum Orchard, and Reed West. Iberville and the Seventh Ward, right. um, Berman on the West Bank, exactly. and Hollygrove were all the hardest hit areas when it comes to low birth weight. Okay. And so we chose Hollygrove because the neighborhood corporation there was very interested in working with us and partnering with us to build capacity and to change the neighborhood okay. conditions. That's the end of the hard questions. Well, this, this, <laughs> program, this program does not work without the neighborhood working Partner. with us. Okay. So so again, we started with the data and said, right. okay, where's the hot zones for us? Right. And then once we identified the hot zones, then it was, okay, so what capacity do they have to help build the bridge right. that we need to build to create a baby zone? Cool. And Holly Grove had the most of what we needed to get started to make that work. What we're hoping to see out of this is if, right. if this works and there the community capacity is built and right. we're able to, to bring those pieces and parts together, then we focus on another hot zone. And you know, you, you, you see whether or not you can create something that in time can be replicated. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, hey, look, everybody, we've been involved in health and wellness for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm always appalled at these types of programs. All right? And I'm going to be honest with you. You feel it in my heart. I, I really, really am. And, and uh, as much as I love them and I know the end goal is good and so forth, all right? But it, it, it always bothers me because the problems are so systemic. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And then we take a part of something and the idea of extrapolating it to other parts without looking at the major economic drivers of the city, the educational issues, mm -hmm. and I would call it the moral philosophical drivers of the city when we have a, you know, we, we, we have a, and we're not going to go on the soapbox, but I mean, we, we have an economy driven by naked women. You know what I mean? And, 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 and old carriages and carts, you know, for tourism. And then, you know, a lazy affair, do what you want. And we wonder why people are shooting up one another and why babies are born with low birth weight. It's like, it doesn't even make sense. Like they were talking about people can drink alcohol whenever they want. We got a lazy affair, everybody do what they want, but then everybody's mad when they shoot when they shoot. You know, it's like, come on, when are we going to clean up the city and get the naked women off and let everybody live serious lifestyles and concern about family? But instead just, of going through all of that. Just to put it into context, um, within yeah. this state, New Orleans is actually not the worst for infant mortality or low birth weight. Um, Monroe and Lafayette actually are. And those are far more conservative areas. And so um, I think that um, you can have some of the New Orleans lifestyle, although you need to refrain from obviously smoking, drinking, um, and taking care of yourself before pregnancy um, in order to have a healthier birth outcome. But you can you can certainly enjoy a little bit of the lifestyle of Louisiana without um, compromising the health of yourself or your pregnancy if you do it in moderation. I would say this. That's a good That's a good point. She went to spell my mind. was a little doom came out. But look, okay, the thing of it is is that the idea that... Um, uh, there is no correlation between lifestyle and low birth rate. I would have to challenge that. Oh no, there is absolutely a correlation. Right. That is the issue of low right. birth weight. It's based upon it's a lifestyle issue, and so whether you have small pockets of poverty, poverty in and of itself has no correlation to low birth weight in and of itself. Well, it, no, it, not in and of itself. Right. And that's the whole point of the baby zone, that Got it's it. not just about whether or not there's poverty. It's also about what is the economic issues that are going on, what are the education issues that's going on, what is the health care issues that are going on, and what's the access and availability. And if they have access and availability, why do the persons that live in those areas not utilize what's there, if it's there? So, so our role here and our role in this baby zone is to really work with that community, right. engage that community to help us figure out how are we going to make that change and, and not edict to them what that change should be. It, it, that's, that's not our role. And that's just the whole point because the countries that do better in birth weight have lower poverty levels. I mean, higher poverty levels. In other words, we're lower than Botswana, okay? In Botswana, they live on $5 a year, you know what I mean, that type of thing. So it's not how much money people bring in that determine low birth rate. We're talking it about... It isn't. 
Yeah, that, that's not issue. Well, I don't make but four thousand dollars a year, and that's why my baby's born at a low birth weight. No, that's not why your baby's born at a low birth weight. So some of the contributing factors to low birth weight are um, not having good nutrition during pregnancy. It has nothing to do with money. That that's partially true. I would say that it's hard Stay to find there. access show, show to me, good, me, healthy, show, high quality food me. in certain neighborhoods across the that city. That is not the truth. That has been that proven. That is not the truth. <laughs> Don't. I'll help you out. Okay? Help. All right. And we do the break. Healthy food doesn't cost more than unhealthy food. And that has not been proven. So where can I go to find fresh fruits and vegetables and organic um, meats and dairy? at a reasonable cost in the city. Okay. I don't want to advertise. <laughs> we can't do it on the show. <laughs> I won't even say it. But y'all know the answer. Okay? That is not the truth. That fresh fruits and vegetables and good foods, this whole idea of access to healthy food, what it's about is people's taste buds. If people went up there knocking on the door asking for oranges and collard greens, you know what I mean, and bananas, and, and organic is no more healthy than non-organic, so let's throw that out so people don't have to go spend money on organic food. There's no truth in that whatsoever. And it's been proven that if people want to cook, they can cook red beans and brown rice. Brown rice does not sell. Whole grain bread, 100%, you can't even find it because people won't buy it. They have taste. What happens is when people are under stress, they desire taste. Taste. They desire sugar, fat, salt, and grease. That's their personal decision. Money's not going to change. They can put a, you, look, you, you can throw out a fruit cart, and we've studied it. We can throw out a fruit cart. If people desire chicken wings that's fried, I mean, fried, greasy, low down, dirty, you know, greasy burgers, that their taste drives that, and they don't want cardboard food, you know, so, you, yeah. I will say that um, it's not just healthy food, um, it's also making sure that you are limiting the number of sexual partners, preventing sexually transmitted diseases. I'm with diseases. you there, now we go, um, we can run, that's good, it's, there it's we go. Also now managing we cooking. stress, and the stress is really high among some of the women in our neighborhoods and our community in New Orleans. I agree with um, you. As a yeah, result yeah, of- Yeah, getting shot. Yeah, right, that's right, exactly, the violence, right, the right. Uh, stress of poverty, of trying to find a way to make a way no, out of no way. No, I disagree, um, disagree, disagree, So go for ahead. some, for some, and, and so this has actually been proven in terms of um, the impact of, of stress on having adverse pregnancy outcomes. Yeah, the but stress, of, the relationship to stress and poverty hadn't been proven, but go ahead. Okay, yeah. so. Stress, yes. I mean, stress, but stress yes. yes. But if you say, well, I, don't have a, I don't have six new cars and three new houses. Right, no, I'm that's not I'm necessary to yeah. have a healthy pregnancy outcome. Again, the, outcome. Company, the countries that have higher birth rate have less money. So to me, that's what wipes all of that out. Because see, every time we say we got to give people more money, it's not about money. I will tell go. you that it's absolutely not yeah, about money because African American women are twice as likely to have adverse pregnancy outcome as white women, regardless of income. income. That's regardless the, of there income. There you go. Now exactly. So it's we not about it. money. It right. is about lifestyle choices. Right. But it's also about community and economic conditions. Exactly. We are uh, exactly. social beings. We live in a community context. We live in the context of our family, that's right. of our neighborhood, and that's of our our city and That's so right. all of those things impact our health. That's right. I'm good. We're going on a break. We thank you so much. Health issues, as you can see, this is a dynamite show. Um, we appreciate your help. Uh, stay with us. It's just going to be a second, and they're going to roll it in a minute. stroke can take your mind, your body, or your life in minutes. I'm Robert Guillaume for the American Stroke Association, a division of the American Heart Association. Stroke is a medical emergency, and as African Americans, we are at high risk. To learn more about the warning signs of stroke 
for yourself and those you love, call toll-free 888-4-STROKE. If you lived in a community that was impacted by Katrina, Rita, or Wilma, or in need of professional emotional support, call the Access to Care program today at 1-866-794-HOPE. That's 1-866-794-4673. This is a 24-7 confidential toll-free line. Enroll and you may receive monies for treatment for anxiety and depression, including out-of-pocket costs for counseling and or medication. Find out today how you can get help by calling 1-866-794-HOPE. If you have internet access, www.a2care.org. Get the help you need to rebuild your life. Access to Care is an initiative of the American Red Cross Hurricane Recovery Program. Access to Care, call today. Welcome back, welcome back to Health Issues and, and, and lively discussion here. So, Ms. Williams, share with us the key facets of Best Baby Zone. What are y'all actually going to do? Have y'all decided that, what you're going to actually do with these women? We're or in the process. Men, or, I guess they're, in, they're involved, too, a little bit. Huh? We are definitely involving fathers, and uh, this is a multifaceted process. So the thing that's different about the Best Baby Zone is that most of the time in public health, we only look at the health issue. We look at infant mortality. We look at low birth weight. We don't look at that in the context of what that family is living in. Okay. And so we're really working on changing contextual issues and neighborhood issues. So we're okay. looking at health. Right. We're also looking at education. So one of the right. things that our mother said is that they wanted education. So we're going to provide some resources for GED training and literacy really? training. Good. And they also said that they wanted access to employment. So we're going to make sure that they get linked to employment. Same thing with the fathers who live there. Um, when we go out to the corner store to do outreach, we find a lot of young men who are on the corner who maybe have never worked before. They may not have the literacy skills. They may have been involved in crime. These are the young men that we want to engage in the workforce oh, and wow. get them working and get them contributing to their families um, and so we are also working on social and community systems change so we want to make sure that Holly Grove is a, a neighborhood that's very young and also very old okay and so there's not a lot of middle ground they're not a lot of middle-aged fo folks living in Holly Grove and right. so we really want right. to engage those seniors who are very civically active okay um, in teaching some skills and knowledge and providing some support to younger families in the neighborhood well, everybody in Holly Grove, so they're about to get a job, they're about to get education. I know, it's a lot. A and world peace. <laughs> <laughs> world peace, I mean, all right in the name. So when you guys go in, that's just the whole point, that when you go in to solve the low birth weight issue, you're going to solve the crime issue, you're going to solve the family structure issue, you're solving the employment, the economic issue, you're bringing in small business money too? We're trying to do whatever we can to change the neighborhood conditions. So, so literally, we're taking it but that, that was just time. the whole point, that th this becomes the solution, since that's a symptom of the problem, it solves every, mm -hmm. well, no, I won't say it solves everything, everything else, because right. as we're saying, uh, a job will help. And it'll increase a, a job and education and those things uh, will help. But if we, unless we do it for the entire city, all right, as soon as you pull the money out, it's going to seep back in. Would you agree? I think that there are ways that you build in for sustainability from the very beginning. So one of the other core components of the Best Baby Zone is looking for sustainability and making sure that you're building infrastructure and not just going into a neighborhood, doing a program or service for one time, but really creating systemic change that is sustainable and that there's capacity in the neighborhood to thrive and live on its own. Um, because we don't want to just do another program, another initiative. I, I, I'm with you on uh, being tired of the programs and the initiatives yes, that don't work yeah best um, practices and all of exactly, that kind of stuff exactly I mean, you know, so the but there is 10 point plans and, exactly right, exactly right, so right. but we are going to do everything that we can to make this neighborhood healthier and then we're going to replicate it in the other neighborhoods and i think that um it's something that hasn't been done before but it's certainly it's certainly a challenge so that's why we're asking for all hands on deck from all community partners who are interested in helping to come and work in the neighborhood hey count me in now 
All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to that. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> she is, I would deal with this guy. No, wait a minute. Let's deal specifically. Let's just define, which we had not done, what is low birth weight? What are we talking about? Because low I don't birth think we weight is, um, that's a very great question that you asked because a lot of people um, have low birth weight babies, but they don't even realize it. Low birth weight babies are babies that are born under five and a half pounds. Okay. Um, and low birth weight babies are more likely to have lifelong health consequences as a result of them being born low birth weight. Okay. Um, they uh, Because their development is not fully um, achieved during during pregnancy they're more likely to have challenges with lungs brain liver all their major organs and functioning even their brain development which is the most important so when you start off with um, poor brain development it's like building a house when you start off with a poor foundation um, you end up compensating for the rest of your life for that adverse experience in early childhood. Okay, a minute and a half left. What causes low birth weight babies? There are many causes, um, but the biggest one is babies that are born before 39 weeks, um, you know, elective deliveries and C-sections and those kinds of things that happen that, that that's a leading cause um, is, is babies that are born too soon. Um, it's also um, exposure to STDs, stress, um, and underweight, smoking during pregnancy. Um, those are some components that contribute to low birth weight babies. Let's go through them again. Smoking during pregnancy. Smoking during pregnancy. You said an underweight mother. An underweight mother, yes. Okay, so an overweight mother. An overweight mother is actually probably more likely to have a... Uh, well, if the mother is diabetic, she's likely to have a larger baby. Um, it's a, a paradox. But if she has hypertension, that's also an underlying cause for low birth weight. So obesity is not a risk, risk factor. factor. It is and it isn't. It is in the sense that if you're obese, then you're more likely to have high blood pressure. So if you experience high blood pressure during pregnancy, which is called preeclampsia, then you're more likely to have a low birth weight baby. So um, in that way, it's related. But underweight is actually more a more significant risk factor for having a low birth weight baby. More significant, but I guess the only thing is, is that if we look at underweight, then... Uh, in New Orleans, we only have a small percentage of the women that are underweight in New Orleans. Right, so and that would that would reduce the pool to where it, it wouldn't even be an issue. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Statistically, I mean, we're at like 60, 70 percent, particularly in, in, in neighborhoods of high poverty. We, we're around there at 75 percent. That leaves you a 25 percent possibility. Right, but let's talk about those 25 percent. Why are they underweight? Think about some of the causes that might be in, in low-income communities around the city. Why might you be underweight? You might be underweight because you can't afford food. You might be underweight because you're smoking or because you're using substances. And so that also are huge risk factors for having a low birth weight baby. Okay, so just uh, say if we eliminate all the other issues, then being underweight probably wouldn't be a No, pr I mean, problem. yes. I mean, so it's well, underweight with condition. With anyway, conditions. Anyway, awesome. This is Miss Kimberly Williams. We had Miss Charlotte Parent on. She had to leave. Work as hard as you can. Fight as hard as you can. If you live in Holly Grove, get ready for a job. This is Health Issues. I'm your host, Chris Sylvain. Do what you have to do to make it happen. Thank you so much. there for drug reasons. We don't use more drugs than anybody else. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But yet it's still prevalent in our communities right. and truly at a point where I think that if we don't provide more substance abuse programs and look at how we can fix this problem, right. we're going to be in a, well, up the creek without a paddle. Health <laughs> Issues 2010.